Hello everyone. I am Elni Binti Hendry Yapolai from Polytechnic Kota Kinabalu. On behalf of our research team, I would like to present our research with the title Enhancing Constructivist Learning through Student Produced Oral Presentation Video. Here's the overview of my presentation today. Oral presentations are a necessary component of all activities and assessments throughout any English as a Second Language ESL classroom. The oral presentation provides students an opportunity to develop their language abilities. Students engage the four fundamental skills of listening, speaking, reading, and writing when preparing for and delivering an oral presentation. In recent years, there are emerging trends of ESL students producing videos as part of English assessment. However, research into ESL students' experiences with video production as a medium for practicing and producing the target language has not been extensively documented, particularly from the Constructivist Learning Theory view. Hence, the study adopted constructivist classroom design practices that have been shown to positively enhance respondents' learning experiences. The purpose of the study were to identify preferred method of delivering oral presentations among students at Polytechnic Kota Kinabalu and University Malaysia Sabah, and to explore students' learning experiences in a constructivist best classroom design on oral presentation topics among students at PKK and UMS. The following research questions were addressed in the study. What is the most preferred method of conducting oral presentation by students at PKK and UMS? And how does a constructivist design classroom impact the student's learning experience using self-created oral presentation videos? Moving on, we go to the literature review. The Constructivist Hall of Fame consists of Dewey, Piaget, and Vygotsky. They believe that humans generate knowledge and meaning from an interaction between their experiences and their newfound ideas. The common ground that united these three psychologies under the umbrella of constructivism is that all the three believe that the learning theories, for example, behaviorism and humanism at the time, did not adequately represent the actual learning process. In addition, their ideas were rooted in experiences in a classroom instead of experiment in a lab compared to behaviorism. For the purpose of this research, the distinction between these three founders will not be used because it is believed by the researchers that they are linked and in a practical teaching or learning situation, one cannot explicitly distinguish one from another. Thus, in this study, when constructivism is mentioned, it refers to either theory except when a specific distinction is made. The theoretical framework utilized in this research stated that learning is equal to constructing meaning from experience. The learner builds upon his or her previous experience and understanding to construct a new knowledge. The passive view of teaching views the learner as an empty vessel to be filled with knowledge, whereas constructivism states that learners construct meaning only through active engagement with the world, such as experiments or real-world problem-solving. In educational field, constructivism is defined as the active construction of new knowledge based on a learner's prior experience to create an effective learning. Several studies have found that constructivist 
theory improve students' academic performance in science, mathematics, economics, and English classes, particularly when it comes to teaching vocabulary, listening, and writing skills. A constructivist class is distinguished by the use of technology in the classroom, such as smartphones, computers, tablets, and social media. Constructivist-oriented ESL and EFL teachers are prone to using ICT in their teaching and learning session. 110 respondents who were higher education students from PKK and UMS participated in this mixed method study using closed-ended and open-ended questionnaires. Descriptive statistics were employed for quantitative data, while coding and themes from open-ended questions were extracted using NVivo. To sum up the teaching method implemented in the study, the oral presentation topic was taught synchronously and asynchronously for three hours per week over four weeks. We are now at results and discussion. As illustrated in figure one, an overwhelming majority of respondents, 85.7%, preferred recorded oral presentation submission. The open-ended questions produce surprisingly similar responses from all the participants as shown in Table 1. The results indicated that despite the more significant burden associated with recording, the opportunity for self-reflection afforded by the method of presentation push students to try harder to overcome perceived weakness or mistakes. For research question 2, almost all students, 91%, spend between 2 and 4 hours preparing for their recorded assignment presentations and it took between 3 and 5 days for the students to settle on one that was satisfactory for grading. It was clear students invested a significantly higher amount of time in their studies as they built new knowledge upon the foundation of previous learning. On a different note, students emphasized the development of their digital technology skills. Among the responses was, we needed to guarantee that the lighting, camera, microphone, and other equipments were all functioning properly throughout the production. And the other response, I would not have known about Canva and the slideshow recording function in Microsoft PowerPoint if it hadn't been for the oral presentation recording. Now, we have to take note that Digital skills are ingrained in higher education and play a significant role in the lives of students. Understanding these critical facets of the 21st century technology that surround us can only assist students' quest for knowledge. Almost at the end of my presentation, this research found that students preferred recorded asynchronous presentation and the predominant reason was their ability to re-record because they had the opportunity to self-reflect and correct mistakes. What does this imply to lecturers or instructors? Even if the class is conducted offline or hybrid, instructors should consider recording presentations for assessment. Recommendation for future research is to examine the learning outcomes of students presenting live versus recorded oral presentations to see if there is a significant difference in students' achievement. I would like to bring this presentation to a close with a quote. And that brings us to the end. I would like to thank you for your time and attention today.
I would now be interested to hear from you with your thoughts or questions.